Lesson 12.3 is geometric sequences. I would pause the video and write down these notes. A geometric sequence is a sequence in which the ratio of successive terms is always the same. So arithmetic sequences, you're adding the same thing every single time. Geometric sequences, you're multiplying by the same thing every single time. That ratio, we call it a common ratio, and you, we use the letter R to represent it. And you can find it by finding the ratio between any successive terms. So u sub 2 divided by u sub 1, u sub 3 divided by u sub 2, u sub n divided by u sub n minus 1. The recursive formula, again, always make sure you label the first term. And then your nth term is your previous term, n minus 1, times your common ratio. Because you have this common multiplier, you're multiplying the same thing every single time, geometric sequences are the same as exponential functions. So arithmetic sequences are related to linear functions, geometric sequences are related to exponential functions. Given these four sequences, decide whether it is geometric or not, and if it is geometric, write out the recursive formula. Go ahead and pause the video and try these four. So the first term, you're adding the same thing every single time. You're adding two every single time. Um, the common ratio is not the same, so it is not geometric. For the second one, to get from 1 to negative 2, you multiply by negative 2. Negative 2 to 4, multiply by negative 2. So you're multiplying by negative 2 every single time, so therefore it is geometric. So a sub 1 is 1, and then a sub n is negative 2 times a sub n minus 1. Third one, I found the first three terms, and I found that you're adding the same thing every single time, not multiplying by the same thing, so therefore it's not geometric. And then the last one, I found the first three terms to be 6, 18, 54, which means we're multiplying by 3 every single time. So your common ratio is multiply by 3, or just 3, so therefore it is geometric. The recursive formula, a sub 1 is equal to 6, and then a sub n is equal to 3 times a sub n minus 1. So again, geometric, you're multiplying by the same thing every single time. Just like we talked about the nth term of an arithmetic sequence, we can use the recursive formula to develop the nth term of a geometric sequence. So we're going to let the first term be a and the common ratio be r, and we want to find a sub n. So just like we did for the arithmetic sequence, I set up an expansion here. So our first term was a. Our second term is going to be a sub 1 times r, so a times r. Our third term is going to be a sub 2 times r, so a r times r, which is a r squared. And then our fourth term, a sub 3 times r, a times r squared times r, would be a times r cubed. So using this, continue the pattern for a sub 5 and a sub 6. See if you can use the pattern to find a sub 50, and then a general nth term for the geometric sequence. So a sub 5 would be a times r to the fourth a sub 6 would be a times r to the 5th, which means if I expand that pattern out, it's always r to the power 1 less than whatever n is. So this is going to be a to the sub 50 is going to be a times r to the 49th power. The power, because it's repeated multiplication, it becomes an exponent, you're multiplying by 1 less than whatever the term number is. So to get to the 50th term, we've multiplied by r 49 times. So to get to the nth term, we're going to take the first term and we're going to multiply it by our common ratio to the n minus 1 times. So that's the nth term for a geometric sequence. So given the sequence 10, 9, 81 over 10, 729 over 100, find the recursive formula, the nth term or the explicit formula, and the ninth term in the sequence. Go ahead and pause the video and try that. So the common ratio is going to be multiplying by 9 over 10 every single time. And then the first term they give us to be 10. So for the recursive formula, a sub 1 is equal to 10, and a sub n is equal to 9 tenths times a sub n minus 1. For the explicit formula, a sub n is equal to 10 times 9 tenths to the n minus 1. And then for the ninth term, I just plugged in 9 for n, and I got 43,046,721 over 10 million. The summing of n terms in a geometric sequence or geometric series, um, if we have a first term of a sub 1 and a common ratio of r, we can sum up the first n terms as the first term times 1 minus r to the nth power over 1 minus r. So using that formula, if we want to find the sum of the first n terms of the series 1 half to the nth power, use that formula to write a general formula for the sum of the first n terms of that series. Go ahead and pause the video and try that. 
So since we're summing up a general n terms instead of a specific number of n terms, our n is just n. And then our first term, if I plug in 1, I get 1 half to the first power. So our first term is 1 half. And our common ratio is also 1 half. So first term is 1 half. 1 minus our common ratio is 1 half to the nth power over 1 minus 1 half. This would end up being a positive 1 half. Those two would cancel each other out. So you end up with just 1 minus 1 half to the nth power as the general formula for summing up the first n terms. So looking at this next series, 1 3rd plus 1 9th plus 1 27th plus blah, 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 plus 1 3rd to the 15th power, pause the video and sum up that series. So for this one, our first term is 1 3rd. Our common ratio is also 1 3rd. And we're going to the 15th term. This would have been 1, 2, all the way up to 15. So summing up the first 15 terms is the first term 1 3rd times 1 minus the common ratio, also 1 3rd, to the nth power, which is 15, divided by 1 minus 1 3rd. If you truncate, plug this in your calculator and truncate, you get 0 0.49999 for a little while. Um, if you round it, it rounds very close to 0 0.5. For geometric series, we can also look at the sum of the infinite series, so the entire series on forever. We say a geometric series converges if, as your number of terms goes to infinity, the sum approaches a specific real number. So it's not going to infinity. It actually gets close to a real number. Um, if it does not, then we say that it's a divergent series. A geometric series converges if the absolute value of the common ratio is less than 1. So if your common ratio is between negative 1 and 1, not included. If it converges, the sum of the infinite number of terms is the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio. The reason for this is if you have a common ratio that is a fraction, um, so I just said 1 over m, where m is an integer, then if I raise this to a really, 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 really big number, I'm multiplying a fraction by itself a bunch of times, which means it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it basically turns into 0. If I raise 1 over m to a giant power, it gets really, really, really close to 0. If we think about 1 over x graph as x goes to infinity, it gets really close to that x-axis, that asymptote line. So if we look at our sum of the first n terms, this piece here basically turns into 0. And so that how, that's how a sum of an infinite number of terms for a geometric series, if it converges, becomes a sub 1 over 1 minus r. Looking at this first series, we have 2 plus 4 thirds plus 8 ninths on forever. First, we want to decide whether or not this series converges or diverges. And if it converges, find the infinite sum. The way we decide whether it converges or diverges, again, is we look at what the common ratio is. So if the common ratio is between negative 1 and 1 not included, it converges. So determine whether or not this converges, and then if it does, find the infinite sum. Go ahead and pause the video and try that. So our common ratio is 2 thirds. To get from 2 to 4 thirds and 4 thirds to 8 ninths, we're multiplying by 2 thirds every time. And since that's between negative 1 and 1, it is going to converge. So we can use the sum of the infinite number of terms formula, and our first term is 2, and our common ratio is 2 thirds. So 2 divided by 1 minus 2 thirds, you end up with 2 over 1 third, or 6. So if you were to take this series and you were going to continue to add them up on forever, your sum would get infinitely close to the number 6. We can also use this to show that 0 0.999 on repeated forever is actually equivalent to 1. So we can actually rewrite 0 0.999 repeated on forever as the series 9 tenths, 0.9, plus 9 one hundredths, plus 9 one thousandths on forever. So now looking at this series, sum up this infinite geometric series. So this geometric series is going to have a common ratio of 1 tenth, which is less than 1, so it's going to converge. And our first term is 9 tenths. So if we use the sum of the infinite geometric series formula, our first term is 9 tenths. 1 minus our common ratio of 1 tenth. So you end up with 9 tenths divided by 9 tenths, which is 1. So therefore, 0 0.99999 is equivalent to 1. So in this problem, we have a pendulum that swings through an initial arc of 18 inches. And then each successive swing is 0 0.98 of the previous swing. So we want to find the length of the arc on the 10th swing, uh, which swing the length of the arc will first be less than 12 inches. 
after 15 swings what the total distance the pendulum will swung, swung, and when it stops, the total distance the pendulum will have swung. So go ahead and pause the video and try this. So this is going to be a geometric series where your first term is going to be 18 and your common ratio is going to be 0.98. So for the first one, I just set up my explicit formula and plugged in 10 for n, so 18 times 0 0.98 to the 10 minus 1. So the 10th swing will have an arc of 15.007 inches. For the second one, we want the swing to be less than 12 inches, so I set the explicit formula equal to 12 and then solve. So I divided both sides by 18. Now we have an exponential equation, so we need to use logarithms. So I logged both sides of the equation, so I got natural log of 2 thirds is equal to the natural log of 0 0.98 to the n minus 1, and I brought that power down in front. I divided both sides by the natural log of 0.98 and then added 1 to both sides. I then plugged this in my calculator and got 21.069, but since we're talking about swing numbers, it would have to be the 22nd swing. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and pause the video and find the total distance traveled after 15 swings and the total distance traveled when it stops. So the, for the sum of the first 15 terms, I use the sum of the n terms formula. So the first term is 18, 1 minus the common ratio of 0 0.98 to the nth power, which is 15 divided by 1 minus 0 0.98, and you end up with 235.287 inches totaled up. And then total distance, mathematically, technically, it never stops swinging, even though it does actually stop swinging. So the sum of the infinite terms would be the first term of 18 over 1 minus the common ratio of 0 0.98, which means the total distance traveled would be 900 inches. So this video has been geometric sequences and series.